Hello and welcome to the introduction to the Stopflow Kinetics apparatus. We see the entire apparatus here. Uh, we have a lamp power supply that powers the lamp here that then feeds into a monochromator. And then we have a fiber optic that leads uh, the light to our reaction area. We have the ability to add two reactants. So we'd add them separately. These are maybe hard to see, but there's two little syringes in here that would have our reactants. And then we have a mechanism that we can drive to push those two reactants together, sort of right behind where the syringes are, through the reaction area here, where we can follow the reaction that takes place using UV-vis absorbance or UV-vis fluorescence spectroscopy. We have a gas cylinder. This is uh, nitrogen gas. This gas is just simply gonna power the um, pneumatic that allows the mixing of the liquid sort of on demand using the computer software. The monitor turns on right underneath. And to get everything going, we just simply turn on our electronics unit. And then we turn on our lamp power supply. We actually have to hit a start button on the power supply. We'll hold it in for about 10 seconds. You might hear a little click few seconds in. Sometimes it's hard to hear the second click, but that second click is the powering of the power supply. Okay, and so then once we get going with this experiment, we need about, or like once we turn the, the uh, lamp on, we need about 60 minutes before we can actually run an experiment. Um, in the meantime, why don't I mention a little bit about how we would actually add some different types of reactants or reagents onto the system. So we have our two syringes here. Now one of the things that we usually do is we usually just keep water loaded on the instrument whenever we're not using it. So this is just simply water. We would lift up on our syringes here and here. I kind of glossed over this, but this is the load position and this is the lock position. In the lock position, we can't really pull downward. Okay, likewise, if we go to the load position, we can load our water back on into the syringe and the instrument syringe lock it in place now it's sort of stuck in place there okay and then uh, so for switching out we would just simply remove whatever the reagents were that were added in this plunger here the bottom plunger would be all the way up in this case we would just simply unscrew swap add our new reagent in screw into place and then just lower until that, that plunger hits the bottom. So you just want to fully load your reagent onto the system in here. Try to make sure you don't get air bubbles. If you can see into the syringe here, you might look for air bubbles as you're adding the new reagent and then lock into place. Likewise, we can swap the other reactant out as well, add the new one in. Of course, we're just re-adding water here, but that is sort of mimicking reactant A, reactant B. So then what we'd want to do is actually saturate the lines of those liquids leading to the reaction area where they're going to mix together, do whatever reaction they do, and then eventually lead to the drain port and then our waste container. So there's two ways we can power this mechanism. One of those is using the software. So let's mention the software real quick. So to get the software going, we'd want to click on the Pro Data SX. Then we'll click on the Data Viewer as well. One key thing here, usually we do all this before you get in here, but who knows what life's gonna be like this semester. But we just click this go online button. If you can see here, the preferences go online. That allows any of the files we generate with our software to be saved onto the hard drive of the computer. So it's a pretty important step. You may find if you forget to do that, later when you run a file, it doesn't really like close and it doesn't really save correctly. It may if something looks strange if you collect a set of data, it's probably that go online button not being uh, selected. And so then over here, what we can do is hit this drive button. And this is going to use that gas that we were talking about. See, it sort of powers that pneumatic. And then that plunger lifts up a little bit, adds some of the water to the system. We can do it again. Now, usually I don't use the drive mechanism. I'll show you a manual way to do this quicker. But um, if you notice the shots remaining, if I zoom in here, 
shots remaining. Every time I hit drive, once it's full, I only have about 25 total shots with the entire uh, uh, syringe is full. And rarely do we use the drive mechanism. Sometimes we do. Sometimes you need to hit this reset button. So whenever you refill, you just hit the reset button. Now, the way to do this process manually is if I flip the, the syringe valve here, then I can drain my like waste reservoir, if you will, flip it back, and then I can just lift up on the plunger accordingly, and I get about five shots in one. And then I can do another five, flip back, and then lift up. So some of the keys are, if you're adding reactants, you better be locked here. So these should be pointing right at you. That means locked. This is unlock, bad, lock, good. And then here, uh, pointing at you is good. So pointing away is the draining. It allows you to drain. And then flip back allows you to refill. And then one of the things that you'll notice if you, like in our experiment, when we do this in lab, we'll have like a yellowish color here and a clear color here. Then they'll take about two of those processes to see kind of like the mixed yellow color over here. Okay, so at this point, we'd be ready to go with the experiment. I think that's probably good enough for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stop and make a second video later.